Hello and welcome to the Cradle News Roundup, your one-stop shop for all news West Asia. My name is Esteban Carrillo. I am the head of news for the Cradle. As usual, I'm joined by my colleagues, content creator and writer for the Cradle, Karim Shami, and columnist and editor for the Cradle, Shermin Narwani. So today we start with uh, news from Syria. Uh, last night, uh, as of the day of this recording, the Israeli Air Force bombed the Iranian consulate in Syria, killing uh, reportedly seven diplomats and a top commander in the Revolutionary Guard Corps, uh, Mohammed Reza Sahedi, who was uh, tasked with handling the Lebanese and Syrian uh, file uh, for the IRGC. So this is, uh, you know, this is, uh, we talked last week kind of about uh, Israel kind of losing its mind after what happened at the UNSC and, uh, you know, pulling out from talks, et cetera, et cetera. But now, you know, this is essentially an act of war. This is a violation of multiple international conventions. This is, you know, on top of the fact that it's an attack on the capital of a, of a sovereign nation, it's an attack on the diplomatic building of yet another nation that, uh, you know, has not actually violated any laws, has not actually, you know, it provoked Israel in a way. And, uh, you know, on the side of Israel, these, these attacks are always, uh, you know, kind of like preemptive, kind of like, uh, you know, hey, we're doing it for our own pr protection, our own security, whatever. But uh, they never face any consequences. You know, attacks in Syria are constant. They've been over the past week or so, they've kind of become more uh, uh, recurrent. They, um, they, they've been bombing Damascus. They bombed Aleppo a few days ago at the same time as the, this uh, extremist group, HTS, launched an attack on the Syrian army. You know, on Friday, I think this was, it was like a coordinated attack that happened. So, you know, the question really here is, what's going to happen next? Because uh, Iran, the response uh, by the president has said, uh, Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi said, this cowardly crime will not go unanswered. And um, the foreign minister, Amir Abdullahian, when speaking with Syrian foreign minister uh, Faisal Megdad, he uh, had a very good quote. He said, Netanyahu has completely lost his mental equilibrium due to the back-to-back -back defeats of the Israeli regime in Gaza and his failure to achieve the ambitious goals of the Zionists. So, you know, Iranians are saying this is just an extension of what we're seeing in Gaza. No. So what can we expect? So we've actually at the cradle written quite a few times about Israel turning to assassination um, as a strategy when it runs out of options or it's not success, uh, being successful in the field. Um, and this is, you know, it's it's clearly escalating on this front. Uh, Brigadier General Mohammed Zahedi, the IRGC commander and his deputy who were killed. I'm not sure all the rest were diplomats. Actually, I think a few were um, police and others. Say so guards. Or yeah. So um, he is purportedly the second most senior IRGC commander to be killed after Qasem Soleimani, who was killed by the Americans. A few year, yeah, in 2020. So, um, but but Israel has systematically now been targeting the IRGC. You know, they've targeted logistics guys who. Um, they, in the Syrian theater, they've targeted um, drone operators and tech guys um, from the IRGC. They've um, they've targeted Hamas officials. They've targeted Hezbollah officials very recently as well. And um, I think the Iranians are right when they say this is a desperate Israel at this point. Um, I want to point out, and we have pointed out in our articles about Israel now escalating on the assassinations front as a <laughs> war strategy that assassinations have never helped Israel. When they killed Qasem Soleimani, and not when they, when the Americans killed Qasem Soleimani, um, Iran sent two dozen ballistic missiles into U.S. bases. This has never been done before, okay? So, you know, decades of killing top Hamas officials led to October 7th, okay? Um, targeting Hezbollah officials um, has led to a 100,000-man Hezbollah fighting force and 10 times the arsenal of weapons that Hezbollah had in 2006. You know, Iran arguably has never been stronger in the region. So the South Nations policy does not work. And yet they double down on this because they need to look like they're scoring victories. We've also talked about how you know, there are people in Israel who perceive desperately that killing Hamas uh, commander um, 
uh, Yahya Sanwar in Gaza will be like, you know, a face saving exit for them and they can leave the war. Of course it won't. You know, the assassinations don't work. And so I think what they did in, in Syria yesterday was very, very different than these things, though. And it wasn't the killing of uh, Brigadier General Zahedi so much as striking a um, a diplomatic mission. Okay, so we have a UN member state under investigation by the ICJ for genocide, crimes of genocide, striking the property, the sovereign property of another UN member state in a third UN member state country. Um, I don't think we've, I don't recall seeing um, a country strike an embassy at all in my lifetime, perhaps, except when the Americans struck the Chinese embassy in Belgrade in 1999, you know, for which the um, U.S. administration publicly apologized profusely, paid for the rebuilding of the embassy and compensated those who lost lives and were injured. So this is unprecedented. And, you know, as you note, Israel in doing this has violated, you know, it's violated the the Geneva Conventions and its war crimes. It's violated um, now under investigation for the genocide under the Genocide Convention and now the Vienna Convention, which protects the um, the embassies and embassy staff in all countries. Um, and, And this really brings us to the fact that Israel's really, really going rogue very obviously. Now, how will Iran... Um, respond. In the past, Iran has responded to these kind of Israeli missions um, by striking Mossad bases in Iraq. Okay, it, yeah, it, that, it's that, been a low hanging target for them, and they've done it effectively and uh, and taken out the Mossad's capabilities in in Iraq, which is important theater for for the Israeli. Yeah, because, like you know, we had had information before here at the cradle about uh, these uh, region of Iraq, Erbil in particular, the city being a hub, not just for the Mossad but for the CIA and other intelligence agencies, and it seems, because this attack, more than anything, looks like bait, no? Yeah, they're dangling bait. Look, Israel's um, doing this because it is, it, it's not able to do this alone, this this war alone. It, it has absolutely failed in its war in Gaza. It has not eliminated Hamas or, um, or uh, drawn down on its capabilities. It, as we mentioned before, Hamas's tunnel infrastructure remains intact. Um, they're fighting force, no? North of They're Gaza, fighting Central towards Gaza. the north where Israel goes. Um, Hamas pops up where Israel thinks they wipe them out. You know, so um, it's not one in 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 this uh, in these theaters. So it's uh, acting brashly, um, unlawfully in order to draw the U.S. and potentially U.S.'s Arab allies into this war against Iran. You know, they were hoping a few years ago to put together an Israeli Arab NATO against Iran. That all fell apart. The Saudis did a deal with Iran. Um, The Emirates and the Saudis have, um, you know, uh, reconciled with Syria. All of Israel's grand plans have have fallen apart. So this is, this is, I mean, this is a desperate ploy and the Iranians are right to point this out. How Iran will react, in my view, is, um, I think it will react asymmetrically. First of all, that's very much part of its military doctrine since the, you know, since the revolution. Iran is not a, you know, doesn't have a mammoth military. I think it spends something like uh, $6.85 billion in 2022 for defense spending, whereas the U.S. spends nearly $1 trillion a year. And Israel, untold billions, you know, that the U.S. gives it as well. So... Iran would probably react or, or respond asymmetrically. Um, but, you know, this is important that uh, Iran has said it will retaliate. In this case, it's been very clear. I think the Iranian parliament and, and other bodies, cabinet, have, have made that decision. Um, and nobody will question or begrudge Iran uh, a retaliation. I mean, whatever they do to Israel will be okay because Israel has gone over and beyond international law, et cetera, to do to target an Iranian um, diplomatic mission. Um, but importantly, I think Iran will not do the same thing. It will not strike an Israeli embassy in another state because Iran, like its allies, the, the Russians and the Chinese, tend to try to cleave to international law because international law actually benefit um, these, these countries and protect them. But importantly, um, Iran gets to then showcase itself as a responsible global actor 
highlighting then that Israel is a pariah state, right? Exactly. So, so because so, uh, the international law in the end works against the, the Iranians, the Chinese, the Russians, because, you know, we have... Not in favor. It, it works I in mean, favor. like uh, on, the, on the international stage, I mean, because if they were to do something like Israel does, they would be all of a sudden, you know, like yeah. uh, the entirety of NATO would be yeah. like, no, we need to go into Iran and so on and so forth. But Israel does it. What is the response from the U.S.? The response from the U.S. is contact Iran and say, hey, we weren't involved and uh, we had no knowledge. But uh, it's um, but then there's no condemnation. You know, I've been looking uh, all morning for a statement of the U- U.S. official saying, you know, how uh, dare Israel attack a diplomatic building, as you said, you know, from one U.N. nation to another. Well, the Russians have now put it on the docket at the U.N. Security Council. So that will happen tonight and we'll see what happens with it. Will the U.S. abstain? I mean, you you cannot get um, a a case more uh, likely to be condemned by the U.N. Security Council than this. Hitting a diplomatic mission. Absolutely. Let's see what happens there. But, you know, again, this is an opportunity for Iran to show that it is a responsible international actor and Israel is a pariah. Now, let's not forget just a few weeks ago... um, Massive Israeli supporter in the Senate, okay, Senator Chuck Schumer, uh, got up on this at the podium and he said, Israel cannot survive if it becomes a pariah. Okay, this is very, very damaging for Israel. Um, and, uh, you know, Iran's interesting, irresponsibly interesting to watch, but I don't think we should despair if it's not like this instant gratification, oversized, incinerating military attack that we've been groomed to expect from U.S. behaviors for decades and decades now. But I think it'll be a smart reaction. And let's not forget, Iran will play the long game. They're masters of playing the long game. I think Iranians now are demanding a a hard response, but that response will be calculated into the long game, which means not drawing Iran a state into this war directly. The Iranians are never going to hit, as you said, you know, another embassy or Israeli territory because this is what Israel wants. What does Israel want by actually going and bombing a consulate in the in a third country? It you know is is to draw them in. But it's interesting, you know, just to go back uh, very quickly to the, um, to you know, the lack of U.S. condemnation. That this attack happened on the same day as uh, U.S. media disclosed that the White House is looking to. Uh, to approve the sale of as many as 50 F-15 fighter jets to Israel uh, in a deal worth $18 billion, you know. So uh, you have a a country that is becoming a pariah, as you said, uh, attacking another country that hasn't done anything, you know, to to provoke this, really. And uh, what does the United States do? More weapons for you. And, you know, 50 uh, fighter jets, that's not for Gaza. That's not for the West Bank. That's for expanded war. That's for Lebanon, that's, that's for Tehran, that's for Damascus. Yeah, that's uh, for Iran because the F-15 has a range that exceeds 4,000 kilometers, yeah, uh, which means that an F-15 can take off from Israel, bomb Iran, and return. And that's a message that the U.S. is sending to Iran. Iran conveyed to the Americans through a third party already that um, they hold the Americans complicit in this. Um, and, and we can see the complicity of the Americans because they are discussing the sale of the kinds of military hardware that can now allow Israel to target Iran. Israel doesn't need this aircraft for its Syria, Lebanon, you know, Gaza adventures at all, you know. So, um, but, you know, I want to point out that, like, what what is Israel's um, goal in doing this? Now, you've seen in Syria for years now, strikes upon strikes upon strikes. What Israel does is incrementally push the boundaries of the rules of engagement with its adversary states to try to um, get them not to react. And then that border has shifted further. Okay, so, and and then it casts um, what it's done, its operation as, or it it casts its enemy in in a new narrative. So if Syria doesn't respond to a bombing, it will be considered weak. It's unable to respond to Israel. This is what they're trying to do with the hitting the Iranian consulate, um, if Iran doesn't respond in a way that, uh, in a big way, then Iran is weak. Iran is unable to, um, you know, strike back at Israel. But if Iran responds, then Israel will try to take that to the bank with the Americans and its allies in the region to try to provoke a full-on war against Iran. 
So it's it. hedging its bets with with an with an activity like this. If you know, so Iran has to be very calculating its response. And I want to just quote from an article that we will publish this week by a new author. Um, and the article is called "How Do Iranians Boil a Frog?" Okay, so um, and he he quotes a a retired lieutenant general in the U.S. quote: "Legend has it that a frog placed in a shallow pot of water heating on a stove." will remain happily in the pot of water as the temperature continues to climb and will not jump out even as the water slowly reaches the boiling point and kills the fr- frog. The change of one degree of temperature at a time is so gradual that the frog doesn't realize he's being boiled until it's too late. Now, this has been Iran's asymmetrical strategy towards Israel. Don't engage directly in the war to make Iran a um, a clear target for Israel, but engage, have its allies engage. And they are doing it of their own volition. Have their allies engage, and their allies are not state actors, right? So it's like a swarm from here, from there, from Yemen, from Iraq, from Lebanon, from Gaza, from the West Bank. Israel gets truly swarmed. And look at Israel's way. I want to say, look at Israel's condition today. Its economy is in shambles. Hundreds of thousands of Israelis in the north and the south have been displaced. No homes, no jobs. The blockade of its vital shipping uh, waterways... Okay, including the um, the Eilat port is disabled, and it knows that its its Mediterranean ports Ashdod and Haifa can be disabled too. Eighty percent of Israelis outside say they will not return, and you're going to see with the new um, conscription laws for uh, religious Jews, right? For the for the the, 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 the ultra Orthodox Jews, that um, you're going to have a huge exodus exodus of uh, ultra ultra Orthodox Jews. Outside of Israel, but you know, um, and the, uh, wait, the, the slow point. bleeding of Israel's weapons and munitions in this war, because even the U.S. cannot fulfill orders at the rate that Israel is using it. Um, hundreds, if not thousands, of Israeli soldiers dead, and international pariah status. This is how Iran is boiling the frog. So, you know, to your point about uh, them uh, doing asymmetrical warfare, a couple of days ago, uh, the Iraqi resistance uh, bombed uh, Elat. And yesterday, after the attack in Damascus, the head of the Hezbollah brigades of the uh, Qatai of Hezbollah in Iraq said that they are ready to cut off the land road that reaches the Zionist entity. So this is them just kind of putting themselves, you know, at the service. And I mean, we know Assad Allah is probably going to do the same. And we know Hezbollah is already probably, you know, spoken to, to Iran. And uh, th- there's already coordination to, uh, to respond to this. And this is also why it's uh, so important to highlight the, uh, the, the weapons deals that continue to be made in Washington for Israel. Because since the start of October 7, uh, the U.S. has sent thousands of thousands of bombs, you know, uh, like 1,000, 2,000 pound bombs uh, that uh, have decimated the strip, you know. And this is more uh, clearly seen at what happened at Shifa Hospital over the uh, the past two weeks, in which Israel was raiding it for, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it might have been like 15 days, 14 days, something like that, continuously. Now, Shifa Hospital, the largest hospital in Gaza, uh, the most special, these 700 beds, uh, the, where people have been uh, taking shelter, where the displaced have been, you know, like uh, uh, the displaced, the wounded ha- have been. And uh, Israel has been raiding it for a while, you know, and like, uh, they've been attacking it for, uh, for a few months now. But now they conducted this raid, and the aftermath of it is just something that uh, when you look at the pictures and when you hear what happened, it's, it's something that uh, makes your skin crawl, you know, like uh, the remains of the people are nothing but bones at this point. This, the, the accounts of executions, of summary executions, uh, of rape, of, uh, of shootings, you know, uh, the, the snipers shooting mm-hmm. at people even for just crossing the windows. Uh, and despite all this, more weapons for Israel. Yeah, so the Gaza Ministry of Health declared that uh, 400 people were found dead inside the Al-Shifa hospital, of course, uh, executed by, by Israeli soldiers or around the, the Al-Shifa compound. So Israel, since day one, uh, they, they tried to, to target the hospitals and they, uh, the propaganda machine of the Mossad and, uh, and uh, the Israeli media. From day one, they wanted everybody to know that uh, hospitals are not safe and that the headquarters of Hamas are under uh, hospitals. And they do this because they do want... As the, the Gaza Strip not to be inhabitable, and what happened yesterday also they bombed uh, uh, foreign aid work, workers, killing uh, 
uh, aid workers that uh, have Polish, Australian, Australian, Australian Can- US, and ca- Canadian. One and that, British. And British. They, they don't want aid workers they don't to come want, to yeah, Gaza because it, they will be targeted. To kill. And, and the, the, the pictures of this is shocking today. The pictures yeah, the, of the car was revealed. Quite clear. It, it, on the roof is it, um, World Central Kitchen's logo. But look at that. What on the roof it, of the car and the and the projectile comes from the air and a massive hole right there. They want to deter aid to these people in Gaza. The, the Israelis have now targeted and destroyed 36 hospitals ac- across Gaza. These are not the last headquarters. The the people in the car, the world uh, the world uh, central kitchen car, were not Hamas operatives. They are targeting aid and assistance um, for Palestinians in Gaza. Yeah, you know, and uh, this, okay, so just to kind of bring it all together, right? What has Israel been doing over the past several weeks? They've been raiding Shifa Hospital, they're creating a holocaust, they're creating uh, something uh, of unspeakable evil. They have been, of course, continuing to bomb the rest of Gaza, killing people indiscriminately. They have set up uh, extermination zones in Gaza, in which these, uh, uh, the order is shoot anything that moves. And um, this, this, was, this was actually revealed We've by... We've seen unarmed civilians yes, getting exactly. sniped in these zones. So it's this is shocking. This is where I'm going with this. Uh, in these zones, the uh, alleged order is to shoot any, you know, uh, any combatants or, any, or anyone that comes towards Israeli forces. But even the, the Israeli troops themselves, speaking to Haaretz, said that a, a terrorist is anyone that has been shot. A terrorist in Gaza is anyone that, uh, you know, literally any person there is a terrorist. If, if the Israelis kill you, you're a terrorist. You know, that's it. That's it. So this is what they have been doing now. They attack Syria. They've attacked Lebanon. They keep killing people here in Lebanon. They keep destroying, uh, you know, they, they, they hit the Beka. They hit like uh, every, every day is deeper. Saida. Sure. They, uh, they are doing this. And then like um, at the same time, again, more weapons for Israel, more bombs, more uh, munitions, more tank shells, m- more jets. You know, the United States, uh, the people at the White House, they like uh, to boast that, you know, we're trying to get Israel not to go into Rafah, not to kill more civilians. We're trying to get more aid in, deport, whatever, whatever, whatever. You know, we're angry at Israel. Biden is calling Netanyahu names. Nothing. The nothing. The, the Hezbollah uh, Secretary General and uh, is absolutely right when he said this is a an American war. Um, he also said, and this is always important. I always want to reiterate this: um, that Israel ran out of weapons in the early months of the war. That without U.S. weapons, Israel could not execute this war in Gaza. In essence, this is absolutely a U.S. war. It needs to be acknowledged at this point. There should be no bones about it. You know. And and this is now, as you said, a Gaza Holocaust. This is the first Holocaust of this century. You know, we've always almost forgotten the Jewish Holocaust that defined the war crimes of last century, really defined it. This century, in the 21st century, it will be the Gaza Holocaust that define um, genocide, you know, and never again means never again. Uh, except to Zionists. Everybody understands that term except Zionists. It is time to make Zionism a crime. This is an extreme exclusivist cult and ideology. It is equal to the ISIS cult, the ISIS death cult. Um, It is equal to the supremacy uh, and extremism of the Hindutva cult. And we have not seen the... the, 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 um, the results of that on against Muslims and, you know, dead bodies in India today, but we may still see that. Give it a sec, you know. So, you know, it, it's just and people are talking about ISIS as though it's the most terrifying. ISIS has not done anything near what Israel has done. OK, ISIS has not committed the crimes Israel has committed. Let's make that clear. ISIS kills Muslims. It is not a Muslim group. We call, you know, people call it an Islamic extremist group. It kills Muslims. It is not Islamic in any way or form. It targets Muslims in Afghanistan. It targets Muslims in Iran. It targets Muslims in Syria, in Lebanon. You know, 
uh, it targets Christians in Russia, but it never targets Israel. Let me just say that today, the slaughter, the mass slaughter of, of Muslims in Gaza should draw the attention of a Muslim group, you think, right? But they have not in six months attacked Israel. This group it are the foot soldiers of a U.S., Israeli, um, you know, unipolar world order to carry out its missions to to vilify Muslims and to kill Muslims. Okay, so we t- today Israel is way worse than ISIS. Let's make this clear. No, indeed, indeed. Uh, you know, there's absolutely no way to get lost here, and uh, because ISIS also, well, they don't have the capacity, and they don't have the political cover. They're 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 attack dogs. They're attack dogs there to be used at the at the will of their masters. And, uh, you know, Israel is just, uh, like I said, the perennial victim. Because for, remember, at the beginning of, no, of the no. 7 October thing, it was uh, like their big uh, media campaign was Hamas equals ISIS. Hamas equals ISIS. And, like, Hamas doesn't want to build a caliphate. Hamas doesn't want to, like, exterminate Muslims. They want to be very... What Hamas did on October 7th is child's play. Child's play compared to what Israel did. And now Israel has acknowledged... Um, that hundreds of the people dead on that day were killed by Israeli troops. The carnage, the burnt vehicles, the shelled buildings, that was all Israel's doing. Hamas shot at Israeli soldiers in the main on that day. There was no carnage this way. It had military targets. I mean, October 7th is the day Israel's victimhood ended. Okay, today, Zionism is the most extreme genocidal ideology. And I don't use these words lightly. Like, people just are throwing them around. Fine, it is creating the new narrative. But genocidal entity, it is Zionism at its core, you know? And now you have um, uh, Zionism turning on Jews, Jews who dare to criticize. As you are so, so it, with the peace, Robbie. Zionism is not Judaism. Let's, it really is the most extremist ideology on par with not the ideology, but worse, because you, we have more people killed more day in the worst kind of slaughters. I mean, you know, when they killed 400 in Shifa, they, we found the decomposed bodies. They bulldozed over dead and live civilians. What okay? a, what a, you no, know, it, the it, pictures it, is just something that, uh, you know, that we you, even, uh, put when you can't show them. You can't show them. But if you do a cursory search on social media, yeah, when you see like... Like our body covered in a blanket and they remove the blanket and you just see skeleton and people are uh, trying to identify, uh, identify their relatives. It's, uh, I never saw something. Like uh, no, no. Yeah, as you said, you know, never again should actually mean never again. Not just never again. It means that to everybody in the world except Zionists. Except okay? the Zionists. But, but let me ask you a question. Are the, is the U.S. government, are they simps? Simp, it's the only word I can think of. Are they simps? Because... When Israel commits these crimes, when we film these crimes, when everyone can see these crimes, when these crimes become undeniable and legal court um, cases start being, um, you know, launched all over the world, all right, and countries stop trading with Israel and countries stop shipping with Israel, what then enables the U.S. government to ship billions of dollars of more weapons to the worst violator of human rights and um the Geneva Conventions, and the Genocide Convention in this century. Why? In an election year, in an election year, what are they thinking? Are they the masterminds or are they absolute simps because the Zionists have them by their balls? If you ask me, I do think that the United States here is a mastermind after all, because like uh, it doesn't uh, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. It just doesn't, you know, like uh, they want these. Why are they sending? Just keep sending weapons to Israel. They want these. Yeah. They want this. But uh, you know, suddenly it's uh, uh, time to wrap up or uh, this week's episode. Time just goes by too quickly these days. Thank you so much for joining us. Please make sure to like, to subscribe, to follow us on X on Instagram and on Telegram. In the description below, you will find links to the articles that we have discussed this week. And if you're feeling generous, please leave a donation in our Patreon. For the Cradle News Roundup, my name is Esteban Carrillo. I have been joined by Karim Shami and Sharmin Arwani. Mm-hmm.